Snacks! Hi everyone, Snackthony Snack Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it is time for a review of the new 93 Punks and, and Vic Mensa album, 93 Punks. God, that is... that is too many punks. Chicago rapper, singer, songwriter, Vic Mensa. He's back. There was a time earlier in this decade when you could look at Vic Mensa's career, how it was starting, and see internet tape and, and see the work he had put into kids these days and, and say, hey, there's a guy with potential. There's a guy you gotta keep your, your eye on. But multiple singles, EPs, and a commercial debut album later, and Vic seems no closer to putting out a memorable project. But now, after a quick stylistic shift with 93 Punks, his new, new, new project, new band, new thing, uh, he, he has made something memorable I would not say it's for the right reasons, though. Vic just started promoting this new venture earlier this year with the release of a cover, a 93 Punks and Vic Mensa cover of the legendary Cranberries track, Zombies. And uh, the cover was horrendous. Honestly, after that, the whole 93 Punks thing just fell off my radar. I, I, don't, I don't want to hear it. But it came back into frame when I saw the Defcon cringe music video for the song Three Years Sober, where Vic can be seen wearing his best punk costume and screaming about sobriety, as well as saying that he fucks himself and calls it masturbation. Also, the sequence beats on this track, the very wide, slightly grunge-tinged punk guitar chords that bands like The Offspring were just slinging back in the day. I can appreciate that on this track, Vic is railing on about some serious addiction issues that he has had, but it makes it hard to take everything he's saying seriously when he couches it in this really edgy fashion punk aesthetic that is so tired and so inauthentic and so played out. Not to mention lyrical gems on this thing like, I played myself like an accordion. Um, yeah. So this song, this music video, could have merely been a case of a bad single, a bad teaser, and maybe the rest of the record is pretty good. But no, really, when you pull back the floorboard, you see that everything underneath is just rotten and falling apart. You have definition of a fuck boy, which basically sounds like some of the worst rock trends of the 2000s lining up with some of the worst musical trends of today. You have these plain trap hi-hats coming together with these uh, whiny Blink-182 vocals, these jump-the-fuck-up, some 41-type riffs, some Pixies-ish guitar arpeggios at one point, too. It's a total mess, especially when you get to the point where uh, you just have Vic shouting, Bring it on, motherfucker, bring it on! Plus, you have all of these ugly, horrendous, preachy verses about this current generation of rappers that, that Vic obviously does not care for. His attitude is, is very Russ. It's very Russ, but now with, with a mohawk. There's also a point where he makes light of rappers or fuckboys that he doesn't like ending up in prison. You'll be in witness protection if they let you back out. Now you're mumble rapping because it's a dick in your mouth. Wow, I'm, deep, I'm deeply moved. I'm deeply moved by that one. I get there's a lot of toxicity in trap music right now. That's, that's a given, that's undeniable. But that is not a reason to wipe away your concern for those who find themselves trapped in the prison industrial complex, which I'm sure Vic is woke enough that he, that he knows that, he understands that. It's just really inconsistent that in this context, in this scenario, he doesn't seem to care. So Vic will do a track like this and then unironically down the road do the song Fist Fight, which is literally just about fighting in a parking lot. And hey, listen, I don't mind a song about fighting, a fight song, that, that's totally cool. That's fine. It just feels out of place given the messages of some of these other songs, compiled with the fact that it just sounds like an unfunny ripoff of Zach Fox and Kenny Beats Square Up. Camp America is an admirable attempt at trying to take a stand on the whole detention camp at the border situation, the family separation situation, essentially criminalizing the fact that many of these people are fleeing their home country, trying to escape danger, 
death. Truly and honestly, I think the hook does have some compelling aspects to it. I think the vocal melody is nice, but the ultra glossy instrumentation to my ears is just gross. And kind of goes totally against the punk aesthetic of this record to begin with. And it sounds like Vic is trying to satirize the whole situation, making light of there being a camp in America that you can't escape and we're gonna have fun there and this, that, and the other thing. But the satire is not good enough to make lines like, Take your clothes off, baby. Let me see what you got. We can have a good time if you're legal or not. It does not make lines like that read the way they're supposed to. Because I would imagine Vic is referencing this person's legal status as a citizen, their immigration status, uh, not whether or not they're underaged and, and sleeping with an underaged person. That's what it reads like. Vic continues to up his punk cred with a good Charlotte feature of all things <laughs> on a track here. The song It's a Bad Dream, it just sounds like yet another emo trap very variation, a bit little Uzi Vert inspired. The melody on the hook is pretty sweet. I think I would like this track more if it were another artist and had a different feature. It, it's, it's not terrible, but it's just more emo trap nonsense, truly and honestly. And given that this record is trying to sell itself as something deep, something substantive, something alternative, for it to do a track like this that is so trendy and so stereotypical, so the opposite of anything truly punk, it just makes it feel cheaper than it actually is. Miraculously, the album somehow goes downhill from here. It actually gets worse. Uh, like it or not, all of the songs, nearly all of the tracks up until this point, have been pretty sensibly and well structured. Can't really hate on the builds of these songs as much as I hate the lyrics, and I don't like the tunes, and I think the instrumentals are trash, and, and anything else bad that I could think of. At least the songs are written pretty coherently. However, after this point, that mostly seems to go out of the window. The song I Cry To is a weird emotional motif that is annoying as hell and should have just been left on the cutting room floor. I Cry 3 is even worse, and again, should have just been thrown into the recycling bin. The song Bad Brains sounds like a weird interlude featuring HR of the band Bad Brains. I heard that before this album came out that Vic was working on a collaboration with him, but stylistically it didn't seem to come out anything like he described in a previous interview. Essentially what we have here is HR just vocally meandering through this sea of lo-fi trash. It's easily one of the worst tracks on the entire record, totally pointless. We have the track Fine, which is not really a sketch as it's labeled to be, it's just another bad song. The only way this track would be a sketch is if Vic were doing it ironically and basically came out and said, hey, this whole album's a joke. <laughs> Oh man, you got me so good with this one, dude. You got me good. There's also the track United States of Evil featuring Tom Morello, which does have some interesting characteristics to it. We have Vic vocally just throwing so much distortion and so much auto-tune on his voice, it sounds like a totally different effect. It's very freaky, it's glitchy, it's strange. His vocals are completely destroyed on this track, but honestly, that's the only compelling thing about it. For the most part, it, it just sounds like some very bad Death Grips cosplay. The whole thing ends off with the hilariously bad goodbye to Heartbreak in which Vic just lists out all of these good riddances, all of these things I'm rejecting and saying goodbye to. And you get the sense that he's saying goodbye to these things as if he's just sending them off and casting them down to hell and the whole world will never have to deal with any of them ever again. Goodbye, violence. Goodbye, suicide. Goodbye, racism. Goodbye, Catholic priests. <laughs> the weirdest one is when he just suddenly says with an extreme amount of snark, goodbye, rape, sayonara, arrivederci, catch you on the flip side, rape. <laughs> this is bad. This was really bad. This was excruciatingly bad. This album, I feel like the concept of this record is, is truly and honestly, I, I, think, I think Vic Mensa heard Kid Cudi's speeding bullet to heaven and he heard Logic's supermarket and he was like, no way, no, no way, no way. I am not letting these guys go down in history with the worst hip hop rock crossovers of the decade. And and damn if Vince didn't didn't honestly come close to taking taking the gold. Oh, I am feeling a light to decent one on this one. A light to decent one. 
Tran. Position, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you should check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Vic Mensa, forever.